Great. Um, so I'm just going to wrap up with um, some closing remarks at the end of the day. Um, and in my talk this morning, I argued that we need to pull every single possible lever to reduce energy consumption of our analyses, and we need to do it now. I also suggested that at least in the short term, it would be good to think about actions that could have a big impact in terms of reducing energy and emissions, uh, but a low effort and are hopefully easy for some of our colleagues who aren't here today, who we've heard about, uh, and we're all struggling with capacity, we need to make it easy for people to adopt these. So hopefully today you've got some ideas uh, to take away of, of those um, actions, whether it's uh, CATS, you know, scheduling jobs, whether it's looking at your code, um, whether it's searching for dark data. Uh, and hopefully you can take some of those back to your labs, back to your departments. Um, so if I can ask everyone when you're on the train home um, to think about the actions that you are personally going to take. And this could be at multiple levels. It can be in your own research. It can be in your lab or your department, or it could be in your wider institution. Um, and as an example, this is what we're going to be doing in my lab at Sussex. Um, so we're going to edit our default fMRI settings, like switching off the unnecessary surface reconstruction that Nick talked about. Um, in the department, we're going to be running a workshop for colleagues to highlight these hopefully easy, low-hanging fruit steps that they could also take. Um, and we're also going to try and work with the Sussex HPC team to implement CATS um, and bundle that in with the workshop to tell colleagues, oh, look, in just this one line, this is how you can uh, schedule your jobs. And I want to emphasise again that I think these different levels of acting influence each other. Um, and when we take action in our own research, please don't doubt that that doesn't change anything. I really think it does, uh, because that helps create change at the department level when we can illustrate to our colleagues what we've done. Um, and uh, you, know, you can say, oh, here, here are my existing scripts, and this is how we can percolate that best practice. And if we're taking action in the department, then that helps create a mandate for change within the university, uh, because we can say, oh, look, there are X number of labs who really want to adopt CATS. So there's a, a request from users um, to make that happen on the cluster. But uh, we've had coming out very strongly as a theme that we do also need some kind of infrastructural <laughs> change in, in many dimensions. Um, and we are going to need collective level action and to be supported in this by funders, uh, by institutions. But how can we feed into that as individual scientists? Uh, well, we can think about funders having a mandatory section in grant applications for a sustainability statement. That's something that came up as a strong consensus uh, across lots of the groups um, of how you're going to uh, minimise environmental impacts uh, of computing uh, in ethical reviews and in papers too. And if you want an example boilerplate of a sustainability statement, Lewick showed one of these. Nick will also have an example in his preprint too. There are existing institutional schemes that we can already make good use of. Uh, so several people mentioned we've done LEAF for, for wet labs um, and there should be a dry labs uh, version that, that Lewick is involved in, in developing coming soon. Um, and I've got their lobby leaders. I think there is always going to be a role for feeding upwards, whether that's to your PI, whether it's to your head of department, whether it's to your vice chancellor. Um, and it might be that if you're a PhD student, it's your PI you can talk to. It might be for me as a PI, it's my vice chancellor I can talk to. But there will always be some upwards advocacy that you can look at. I think we can also make use of academic societies, and this isn't something that, that came up um, hugely in the group discussions. But for example, um, I founded the Organisation for Human Brain Mapping Sustainability Environment Action Group, which Nick mentioned that he's leading the pipelines group of. Our secretary, Irene, is also here today. Um, and that's been incredibly useful for bringing people together internationally and again socially norming that this is something um, that not just climate scientists um, want to take action on. And it is enabling us to, to share best practice, not just within the UK, um, but around the world. So as we wrap up, I'd like to flag that there are some resources for you to take away and hopefully help you with putting some of this into action. Um, so Lewick flagged the Google group um, and the community of practice that he's set up. So do scan the QR code. We'd love to have everyone get on board um, with that group and that list. Um, I've mentioned to a few of you that this is the, the first time we've run this workshop, but we hope it's not going to be the last. Uh, and through this group, we're going to be able to share resources and hopefully keep growing the community. Um, we're, we're not going to solve this in the next year, right? But climate change is going to continue to get worse. So we need to come back and keep revisiting this and bring a friend next year. 
Uh, also, if you look on the final page of, of the PDF program, um, there's various links to some of the key resources that you've heard about um, through um, the talks today, such as the LEAF scheme, such as uh, CATS, NICS resources uh, for more efficient imaging, um, and Oak's Green Algorithms, so uh, do have a look at those. Um, and of course, I need to do some thank yous. So a very, very big thank you to the funders who have helped us put this event on. Um, the Software Sustainability Institute have supported our travel bursaries. So thank you very much to the SSI. Uh, the Medical Research Council and UKRI have funded several of the projects that you've heard about today. And we would not have been able to uh, give you these insights without funders' support. Of course, we need much more funding. <laughs> But uh, thank you very much to what they've given us so far to get us to where we are. And of course, a huge, huge, huge thank you to the Wellcome Trust, who have hosted us here today, who've kept us fed and watered. Um, Talia has given us some fantastic insights um, from the fund uh, perspective. Um, and Max has been fabulous in looking after us with the organisation. Uh, and Mina, thank you very much um, for all the tech support. Uh, and thank you very much to all of you for coming. Um, we hope this has filled some knowledge gaps. Um, and I've certainly learned a lot <laughs> from other fields. Um, and it's been brilliant to discuss together where do we go forward from here. Um, one final point is your badges. We would like to reuse these. So please do leave them um, on the table um, as you leave. Uh, and I do very much hope this isn't the end it's it's the beginning and we look forward to seeing you at another environmental impacts of computing workshop do get in touch with any of our speakers if we can help with anything um, and together we can green computing thank you mm.